this is a viewer requested video on the Pocket Pro. Uh, this, this viewer uh, made a comment and uh, asked if I knew if the Pocket Pro could monitor Modbus uh, RTU or serial Modbus waveforms <clears throat> with the oscilloscope. Uh, I've set up a uh, Modbus setup between two IDEC FT1A C14 little uh, all-in-one PLC HMI units. Uh, just so you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, this bottom one here is the uh, the slave and the top one is the master. If I push a button on the, the uh, slave, you can see the master reflects that. Uh, if I change the value here to uh, something, you can see it populate on the top one. Likewise, if I uh, change the local up here on the uh, master, that appears down here on the uh, on the slave. So they're communicating via Modbus uh, RTU. This is an RS-232 connection. Two wires. I've got my two Pocket Pros in multi-channel mode. I'm, I'm going to monitor the transmit channel on the uh, master. It's going to be monitored by the, the uh, yellow one. That's channel one. And the slave transmit is monitored by the orange one here, which is on channel two. I am currently got these set for a value this is currently set on a baud rate of 38,400. Uh, the commenter asked me to check on 38,400 and also 78,600 baud or 78.6K, but I don't have that option on here. So uh, after I do this test at 38,400, I'm just going to jump up and do the uh, 115.2 and see what results we get on that. So, you know, I'm assuming if we can read it on 115.2, uh, there should be no trouble reading it on the 78.6 kilohertz. So let's do this first test on 38.4 and then uh, I'll download the changes to the two units to change the baud rate. Let me switch over to the Pocket Pro app and then we'll do a screen capture of that. All right, I've established a connection to uh, both Pocket Pros. Let me click on the measure button up here in the top right. We're gonna go to oscilloscope mode. Got both channels on. Let's go to the mode. We've got it set for five volts per division currently. We've got it set for one millisecond. We may need to adjust that. Let's give it a try. Uh, trigger, I'm gonna do a, uh, first for starters, I'll do a continuous trigger. And let me uh, increase the trigger voltage up a little bit. Activate it with the circle button here in the lower right. See what value we get. Let's uh, move this trigger bar over so we can hopefully see both waveforms. Turn that off and back on again. That channel two is a little wonky. I wonder if I lost my ground. I did. So I lost my ground. So let me uh, reattach the ground. There we go. So the red waveform is the master's transmit. The blue waveform is the slave's response. Now let me just put it on a one-time trigger and start that. Let me do another one, see if I can get it on the right side. There we go. So if you do it this way, then you can uh, pinch and zoom and, and analyze the waveform. Even though you know it's fairly narrow when I capture it, you can do it this way and get a better look at it. And again, this is at 38.4 on a baud rate, kilohertz. Uh, also, I don't have it on here, but I can turn on some of these functions and look at the uh, frequency, you know, if there's any of this stuff that's uh, relevant to this test. I'm not really up on analyzing Modbus waveforms, but uh, clearly it'll capture it. I just don't know how accurate this is. You'll have to be the one to uh, tell me how accurate this is, if this is, if this is suitable for your needs. Turn on a bunch of these values, but uh, period. Oh, you can only get four at a time. So there you go, and then you can scroll back and forth, take a look at uh, both responses. Okay, so uh, hopefully that helps you to determine if this is suitable for your needs. Let me switch to the uh, higher baud rate, and we'll run another tech check and see what that looks like. So let me jump on. I don't have a screen capture going on this laptop right now, but uh, let's just jump right to 115.2. We'll save that. Download. Jump 
jump over to the slave unit. Change that one to 115.2. Hit OK. Hit download. Yes. This time we'll go ahead and watch the unit. Communication is restored. Okay, Let's make sure it's still working. Okay, it is. We're good, we're communicating. Now let's uh, switch back to the uh, screen capture of the Pocket Pro app. And uh, we'll see what kind of waveform we can capture at this higher baud rate. See if it makes any difference. Okay, we're connected to both channels. Go to measure, oscilloscope. We've still got the same settings in here. We do need to change the trigger. Let's go to a continuous trigger again. Uh, bump up the trigger level a little bit. Move the trigger time over. And let's see what kind of waveform we capture with this. So you can definitely see that it's faster. See how close they are together. So let's turn that off. Let's do a one-time capture. Boom. See, now we can uh, zoom in on that. A little choppy. I don't know if that's going to be a, a clean enough signal for you to use or not, but it is capturing it. Definitely doesn't look as clean as it did at the lower baud rate, but uh, again, we are higher than the 78.6 that the uh, viewer was interested in. Looked a lot better at the lower baud rate, so should look a little cleaner at the 78.6. Turn on a couple of these things again. All right, so Pocket Pro, pretty capable little unit. If you need a cleaner waveform, you're perhaps going to have to go with something a little more advanced, you know, maybe a Picoscope or something. Uh, I have one of those too. It's really nice, but, uh, you know, having your cell phone in your pocket all the time, being able to pull out a Pocket Pro and capture this, hopefully this will uh, help you out. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below. If you have any more information, uh, settings you see that I may have had incorrect that could be helpful to uh, read this better, let me know. Take care.